I'm Stevie O, and welcome to my studio, Mystical Lady Productions and Studios. Today, in part two, we're going to talk about drum machines and sequencers and sound modules and basically how I get started with the production of sequence drums, program drums. Welcome back to part two of this video series of reproducing Caden Cashmere's The Sweetest Goodbye. Big shout out to Warren Hewitt and the people that produced Like a Pro for giving me the green light to go ahead with this video series of one of the songs in their catalog. This is great. All right, first thing I'd like to do is introduce you to some of the equipment I use. I use some uh, older equipment combined with some newer state-of-the-art equipment. What I do when I start my drums, instead of using the keyboard or the DAW, I use the drum machine for the actual programming. And it's the older Alesis SR-16. Just use the patches off of there to create the drum patterns that I want. From there, I go on to this MIDI sequencer here, the old Roland MC300, which is great because I can do a lot of editing within the module there. But once the drum patterns are done on the drum machine and into the sequencer, I then trigger my Roland Integra 7, which is state-of-the-art. The sounds in here are fabulous. They've captured all of the Roland sounds in the history of Roland catalog, all in one sound module. And then from the Integra, I will track out into my interface and to my DAW. Hey, this is Stevie O. If you are enjoying this content, if you're into this kind of thing, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share and all that jazz. Would really appreciate the love. We'll see you in the next video. Now, this is the process I do when I sequence every song. When I start with the drums, I'll listen to the song and I'll write down all the measures on a sheet of paper. I'll show you what I mean. I'll just start with this and start playing the song. Broken me and down, drowning in your tears, keeps on pouring down the fire, and your heart's burned out. Okay, so by the end of the process, these are representing four counts, each line, one measure. Now my patterns on the drum machine sometimes will be one measure, sometimes will be two. But I'll go alongside here and you got two measures of intro. Okay, you got your first verse, first chorus, on down. Second verse, second chorus, lead guitar at the end. Not just like any other drum machine or any other sequencer or some of the other DAWs that offer sequences built in. You have to manually enter the information. So I'm going to start play and it's going to give me a click count. One, two, three, four. And I have to manually enter on the pads what I want to play. And it just repeats the pattern for you, right? I continue to add kick drum and snare and other instruments from the drums one pattern at a time. I'll listen to the song, take it the first measure or two or four and decide, okay, this is what's happening, this is what I'm hearing, this is what I need to do to duplicate it. Okay, in this case, I'm making up the drums myself, so I'm not copying like I would on another cover song. I'm actually creating it myself. So I decided to put the following patterns together. Now this is pattern number three. It's just a simple four count, and that is while the intro and the piano and vocal are happening. There's really no drums. I'm just looking for basically a click track. This is pattern four. Okay, it's got this nice little open hi-hat on the tail of it. Pattern five. It's got a ride symbol on the beginning. Pattern six. Pattern six has got that little open hi-hat with a tom-tom on there. All right, cool. So we do that until the entire song has got some kind of drums happening that I have to actually go in there and do four counts or eight counts at a time. Now, while I'm doing that, I'm keeping track on my handy little piece of paper. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so as I'm creating those patterns, I put the number corresponding to the measure above the line. So in your intro, you got pattern three, pattern three, first verse, etc., etc. 
So you get all the way down to the bottom. Once that is completed, I come back to my drum machine side by side here and I change from pattern right to song mode right. What I'm going to be doing is entering all those patterns with the numbers pad here, like 03, enter, 03, enter. And you enter those just like they're displayed here. Now you got the whole song and the patterns are going to change by themselves as the drum machine plays back. Now once you've listened back to that and make sure everything's the way you want it, I will then MIDI out of the back of the drum machine, right on into the sequencer. And I will dump those drums onto the sequencer where it will be stored on a floppy disk. And what the sequencer will do is it'll play back the drums, what I just programmed it to play. So now instead of me tapping the notes, the sequencer is tapping the notes. I've had this sequencer since the early 90s and with this drum machine and sequencer I've probably programmed over 350 cover songs for my one-man band gig that I did for decades. Alright so this is where it gets cool because once it's on the sequencer we can play any instrument we want. We don't have to play the Alesis SR16. So what I'll do is I'll go from the sequencer to my Roland Integra. I got this all set up to receive on channel one, my drums. So we'll head back to the sequencer here and I'll push play midway through the song. I think it's about to come into the first course or so. Pretty cool, it gives me Three different opportunities to edit, and then also on the Roland Integra itself, I'll be able to go in there and change the tone of the drums, the pitch. I can even tune the drums to a certain key. Other features with that Integra include decay time and uh, velocity sensitivity, of course. it Everything you want to do to make a drum sound just the way you want it, you can do it with the Integra, the supernatural Integra 7. So I'll go from the sequencer, and I'll trigger just, let's say, the kick drum and a snare drum and then I'll go to the DAW. Now what I like to do with the kick drum and the snare particularly is record more than just one track. Here for example on the kick drum I've got four different kick drums that, that I've recorded off of the Integra and what I'll do is I'll mix them to make one kick drum sound the way I want it and I will process the kick bus instead of all the individual tracks. Now here with the snare drums, the same example. What I've done is I've taken only two snare sounds off of my Integra, the studio snare and the jazz snare. And I've triggered two other samples off of my computer. I've got some samples from Dr. Bob. It's called White Noise. And I've also got the Simmons drum collection to trigger. And what I like to do with this snare drum, this is one of my production secrets, is I like to take two snare drums from the Integra, combine it with a little Simmons and a little White Noise. And what it does kind of gives you that fat Def Leppard snare. Little trick I learned on YouTube from Dr. Bob. And as I continue, you can see I've recorded the hi-hat, both an open and a closed hi-hat. I, I keep them separated. And then the three toms, high tom, mid tom, low tom. And then finally, the overheads. I've got a high ride, a low ride, a high crash, a mid crash, and a low crash. Now I've displayed the sequencer actually playing the rolling and going the track. But of course, as many of you know, we can go off the keyboard to trigger the rolling as well. You know, you've got your variety of sounds to choose from. Thank you. So anyway, what I decided to do was add a little rim shot to that first verse, give it a little character, down here on the key of G. So I'll show you what I did. And so basically that's it. Got the programming on the drum machine, the sequencer, sound module, into the DAW, separate tracks. Drums are recorded and done.
So that'll conclude it for part two, drums and sequencing. Part three is going to be piano tracks. We're going to review the original tracks, come up with something different, practice around with it, and when it's ready, I'm going to go to sequence and then go to the doll with that as well. So signing off for now, this is Stevie O in the Purple Cave, Mystical Lady Productions and Studios. See you next time. <laughs>